So after this well, very, very impressive uh, demonstration of how physical textual criticism can actually be for us as uh, humanists. So, um, and after this brilliant talk of Ben Brumfield, so thank you very much, Ben Brumfield and uh, the HEMA uh, uh, group. This event is actually uh, a joint uh, event of Dixon, of course, of the Hema Group, of Ben Rumfield, and of Cologne Commons. So Cologne Commons is, uh, is a group organizing cultural events, music events, promoting uh, the cultural, uh, the creative commons license, and uh, one of the organizers is Torvis Glücke, which uh, we contacted to organize this event. And the other person is Frank Christian Stoppel. He organized several concerts and is very, very active in this, uh, in, in this uh, field. And we are very happy to have both of you here. And we have your band here. But uh, so, Frank uh, uh, Christian Stoppel will now introduce uh, you to Hi. So it's been longer. It's been a long day for all of you, I guess. And uh, we have some music coming up, so I, I keep things uh, short. Um, I'm, I'm a musician. I studied musicology. I run a little net label, which I guess you never heard of. And uh, now I get my 50 minutes fame with Creative Commons. And um, I think Creative Commons is, uh, is the thing uh, that we all should uh, use. And um, I, I take it that you are familiar with Creative Commons. Yes, so far. Okay. Um, as long as I figure out how to get the next... No. Ah, okay. So this, these are all the options that you have when you, are, when you use the Creative Commons license and if you, if you really want to contribute to the Commons then you should use the buy or the buy share alike license because then other people can use your stuff and then it's like the dwarfs on the shoulders of giants and we all are very happy that we can use each other and normally this is the thing that uh, humans should act which is which with each other. So from, from musicians there's a problem because commons always works if you don't care about the money. And if, if, if you're paid from, from somebody else, you, you are working at the university, you're paid from the university, so you can publish your stuff and do whatever you like or whatever the university tells you. And if you are an artist, you have your, your art and you take a photo and you put the photo under a Creative Commons license, everybody sees the photos and they want to buy your art. But musicians, what you put into the internet is, is your art. There is no difference between the... There's no, no derivate work. So musicians are really... Ah, I don't know. Should I let loose or not? So most musicians use the uh, non-commercial and no derivates work. But I think we need to change that. So my idea is to say let's all use the buy license and the share alike and we all together make a lot of money with everything we produce and then we go on and live happily ever after yes no but the sad thing with music that doesn't work and that's because of the tragedy of the commons do you know the commons the, the, the main example for the tragedy of the commons is you have a you feel of grass and you have all your farmers and everybody is allowed to put the cows on the grass and they have a system that tells you when you can put your cow on the grass and one day you think oh, okay I got 20 cows I'm only allowed to put five there well if I now put every cow on the, on, on, the, on the field nobody it doesn't make a difference so and now everybody does like that and then we have the tragedy of the comments that is you burn all the jungle because you need agriculture.
And this is a well-known phenomenon. I guess you're familiar with the tragedy of the commons. And with music, there's something alike. We don't have a shortage of resources because in the internet we have lots and lots of servers. We can put all our music, every little single idea I got when I was walking here, I recorded on my phone and I put it into the internet. And every one of you does the like. Uh, we have thousands and millions of happy composers who all put their stuff into the internet. And that's a tragedy, because we have a lot of noise and we have very, very, very little signal. And this leads to this. On archive.org, which is a very great platform, we have, as by yesterday, 1768 net labels. And now, go and find my net label. <laughs> so, this is some of, this, of the tragedy of, of the musicians because everybody wants to be on the internet and you can be on the internet everybody is there but nobody will notice because the noise so another thing a website I really really like is uh, Bandcamp because at the band you can put your stuff there and you can say okay download, pay what you want if you pay, fine. If you don't pay, I don't mind. Just as long as you are becoming a fan. And we have a lot of genres. We have a lot of subgenres. And if you do a little multiplication, you have here eight releases. And it goes to page 200. You have for each subgenre 1,600. And it's only the best selling artists. So. We have 1,600 best-selling artists and now you go and pick one. What do you do? Do you browse? Well, maybe some of you will click on the 200 and listen to the worst-selling artists because we are all these geeks. We don't want to be like everybody else. We want to find the hard stuff. But most, mostly music is a system where the winner takes it all. You have, you have one musician, this is a star, and every, every musician, this is a tragedy, every musician thinks he can be the star. One day I will make it, if I have all, if I have this one hit and then I will make it. And so do like five million other musicians think. So we have one or very few good artists who make it and the rest of us end up in the stereo wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, 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 Ster okay, to, this was a bit clumsy because Stereo Wonderland is one of the best clubs in Cologne. They have very great concerts, they are very nice people, but as you can see, we don't get a thousand people in here. So this is what I meant when we end up in the Stereo Wonderland. So. So, how can we solve this problem? And the problem is, where are the editors? They have a gig in London tonight. What? They have a gig in London tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, who, 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 will, uh, who will help us? Who of you will, t will spend a lot of time searching for good, good music on the internet? You go to Spotify and you click on your listening whatever your friends recommend or whatever. Yeah. But we don't have a ses we don't have a good system of, of people who like to fetch the really good stuff from the internet. We have some. So I will I will show you some. We have of course some blogs. I really I really like this one. This is a tone magnet. He listens to a lot of metal music. And we have some kind of charts where you have the winner takes it all. And we have some kind of random listing. Whoever wants can go to Klong Klong Mo and um, put his stuff there. So, I think this is a problem. And this is a problem of Creative Commons because it doesn't cost you money. You don't have to invest in your artists. If you run a label, you just say, 
Oh, okay, you're my friend. It's it's not your best record at all, actually. I don't even like it, but you know, web space is cheap and if nobody downloads it, who cares? So, but yeah, and it's okay because it's your friend. So, so w w why not putting it on the internet? But you increase the noise, and all these editors they do it in their in their spare time. And we have we have some some podcasters, great podcasts. Um, one thing I really like is this on, on on the German radio station on the um, Deutschlandfunk Kultur. We have uh, on Saturday a, a show called Breitband, and they have excellent uh, Creative Commons music. And this is one guy who does it, uh, uh, who volunteered for it, and he does it in the spare. And we had uh, Christian Grasse. Uh, Christian Grasse was a very good podcast, but as it is Creative Commons and he does this in his free time and he doesn't get paid, one day he decided, well, I don't like to do podcasts anymore, I do something other. And this is a real big problem of, of the Commons and this is a big problem of, of the Creative Commons at all that uh, on one day the people decide, oh, I don't like to do it anymore. So, what I like to have you all just spend some more time and maybe talk each other and don't put everything on the internet. If you're a musician and you run a label, it's, it's nice to have it there. Yes, of course, you can put it everywhere, but if you run a net label, just Think harder if, if you really need 4,000 of dub techno tracks on your net label and stuff like that. I, I am to blame also because I, I also um, don't take it seriously, this, this editing. But I think this is a very, very big problem of the internet that you have a big, a huge noise and um, so much signal. So, what I like to say to finish this is I'm a big fan of Creative Commons, so ah forgot this page. So this is a situation as I see it. We have the major empire because they have a lot of money, they have the networks, they have people who go to the radio shows and stuff like that. They can make the hits. We have the indie country and the Creative Commons music. Creative Commons is great for, for, for the Commons as in Wikipedia and for, for the university, but for the creative people, it doesn't work really by now. So I have no solution, but so my impression is that Creative Commons music is not dead yet. It just smells funny. So if you have any idea, just start changing the world. Go to Bandcamp and uh, don't just download it. Just don't download it for free and, and spend some money on it because it's it's because we are so convenient and we are so so lazy. And if we keep on being convenient and lazy, uh, we will see where our world ends with that. So spend some more energy and some more money. So now we have some music to come. This is. Oh, I want to say.